Peace and blessings. Thank you for joining us this Wednesday for a life application word on Wednesday. Today, we're going to be talking about managing our attitudes, managing our attitudes. This should be very interesting, uh, thought provoking and prayerfully. It's going to help us uh, to edify the body of Christ uh, through his word. We're going to go to the book of Ephesians, chapter number four. Let me turn to it myself Ephesians chapter number four I think it's going to be verses 22 through 27 Ephesians chapter number four verses 22 through 27 that you put off concerning the former conversation of old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun go down. Let the sun, let not the sun, let not the sun go down upon your wrath and finally verse number 27 neither give place to the devil neither give place to the devil I, i'm going to talk in very simple terms on today because it's very important uh, that we have as as we've heard before check our attitudes uh, our attitudes is 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 the way uh, we we think towards people the way we think towards things and it's, it has a lot to do with our perception uh, towards things as well. And so we want to work on managing our attitudes. Managing our, atti managing our attitudes can be one of the most important things we do as far as how we treat other people, especially how we treat like believers. As the Bible says, we are one body. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. Uh, people you know, like to say, use for an excuse not to come to uh, the brick and mortar, but they like to use the excuse that, that we are the church and the church is in us, and that is true. And we are the body of Christ and we are to come together as one fit body. We cannot come together as one fit body if we're scattered, you know, all abroad using that excuse that the church is in us. The church is in us. The church is in us. But we are to not forsake the assembly uh, together, as the Bible says. And so we need to do our part in strengthening the body of Christ. That's the whole purpose of Paul writing this book to the church of Ephesians. He had stayed three years with this church. So um, undoubtedly he had formed some strong relationships and developed a deep love for this church at Ephesus. Um, now this, this church at Ephesus, he is not writing this letter rather to the church at Ephesus uh, for, um, to correct any fallacies or uh, no heresies or anything of that nature. He's writing this letter primarily and basically to encourage the church, to show them how the church is to be functioned, to encourage them to do right by each other and do right by the church and to strengthen the church. And that's why this letter is so important to us here on today, because it is our job to strengthen the church. It's not our job to tear down the church. It's not our job uh, to spread schisms in the church and, and tear the church apart. The church is, um, if we're not careful, we're going to implode. We're going to blow up from the inside out. The devil doesn't even have to work hard against the church nowadays because the church is bickering and arguing and fussing uh, with each other so much that the devil can relax and just let us, you know, tear ourselves down if we're not careful. And so this goes back to our, uh, our attitude. And in this series, it's important at this point to talk about managing our attitudes, managing our attitudes. We are held accountable for the way we act. We are held accountable for the by the for the way we act out. And we are held accountable uh, by the way we treat other people. Amen. People may not treat you well, but it's up to you and I to manage our own attitudes. You know, we don't we don't lash out. And retaliate uh, over everything. God has given us everything that we have. 
nothing that that we have was not given by God. God has given us everything, including our attitude. I want to read a couple of definitions that that I've written down about attitude. Uh, definition number one: An attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. A settled way about thinking or feeling about something or someone. So we can talk about that first. As um, I've read the scripture to you, we could talk about that first. What is your attitude towards the body of Christ? What is your attitude towards the body of Christ? What? How do you think or feel about the rest of the body in Christ? Do you have love for the body of Christ or do you have resentment for the body of Christ? Do, do you have um, the attitude towards doing your part and strengthening the body of Christ and making the, the church better? Amen. I know um, I'm specifically talking to Assembly Chapel because that's where the, the, that's the portion of the body of Christ that my heart is. That's the portion of the body of Christ that, that God has placed me as pastor. And I have a, a great interest in everyone doing well at Assembly Chapel. That's why we make the affirmation. And you can say it with me. We are more abundantly blessed in every area of our lives because that's that's what I pray and that's what I want for the body of Christ. And it's, and it's like Paul here when he's writing to the church of Ephesus. He wants the best for this church of Ephesus. He only spent three years there and feel this way. I've been at Assembly Chapel 11 years, so I feel strongly about the success of our people. I feel strongly about the development of our people. I feel strongly about about the the furthering along and the love of our people. I feel strongly about all of these things. And I'm seeing and, and prayerfully, I'm seeing that the, the the thing that destroys church most is is attitude, because attitude will stop you from loving your neighbors. Attitude will stop you from coming to church and assembling yourselves together. Attitude will stop you from from treating people the way that you are supposed to be treated. As far as your attitude towards people, your attitude towards people. And this is a very helpful point. Your attitude towards people should be uh, the equivalent to the attitude that God shows you. God is a forgiver, so you should be a forgiver. You know, God is a healer, so you should pray for people's healing. God takes pleasure in seeing uh, the, the people of his kingdom do well. You should take pleasure in seeing people in the kingdom of God do well. Don't be jealous. We need to rebuke jealous spirits. All of the time, don't be jealous. And and I and I said before, I said a million times, don't compare your blessings, don't compare your success. <clears throat> Excuse me, don't even compare your failures to anybody else's. Don't compare your journey to anybody else's. Amen. And that will help you to manage your attitude. Remember a couple of weeks ago when I said that God gives us things to be stewards over. And um, actually, it was uh, it may have been last week when we talked about uh, the three servants. The one got the um, he, he got he got uh, he got one and the other got five talents. One got one talent. The other got five talents. The other got two talents. And the one that had one talent didn't do anything with his. And so the the attitude that we are to have is to be good stewards over what God gives us. That's 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 where we start off with managing our attitudes and now god gave you and this is just an illustration but god gave us our attitudes the day we were born the day we were born we had an attitude what do i mean when we were were infants when we were babies and something didn't go our way you know we cried we kicked we hollered we screamed until things went our way until somebody came uh, to take care of the need that we had before we could speak. Amen. When you when we were babies and we were hungry, uh, you know, when you see a baby get frustrated and he'll just cry and holler and turn red in the face. The thing is, it's fine. That's fine when you are a baby. Now, managing your attitude, I can wrap this up in a nutshell. Managing your attitude means as as the as when when the master came back, and he was pleased with the one who had increased his token, his uh, he had increased what he had given him. 
Amen. I don't know why the, why the why talent. I can't. I don't know why the word keep escaping me. But when he came back and he increased his talents, this is the same thing that, that when, when Jesus comes back, he wants to see us with better attitudes. God gave us an attitude to manage. God gave us an attitude to be a good steward over. God gave us an attitude uh, to make better. We should be better with our attitudes and everything else when Christ returns. You see, and, and, and the point that I want to make with the baby is some of us are not managing our attitudes well at all. Some of us are still kicking and screaming when things don't go our way. Some of us are still swelling up and turning red in the face when things don't go our way. Instead of leaning to the scriptures, your attitude should take you uh, from frustration. It, it, we all get frustrated. We're going to look at that in a second. But your attitude should not be the same as it was when you were a baby. It was okay to kick and scream and cry when you was a baby. Now that I'm 51 years old, I have no business kicking, screaming, and crying when things don't go my way or when I have a need. Amen. I am to depend on God. I, I can reach out to the brothers. I can reach out to the sisters. This is where you are. This is how uh, your attitude changes through time. This is how you manage your attitude. I have managed my attitude to the point that I know better than to kick and scream and cry like a baby. Amen. My attitude is getting better. Amen. It's the same thing as before I was saved. And this is what the scripture is saying here. If I could read this verse, if I could find it, uh, I didn't get the Bible that I like to get with the uh, scriptures and columns. Amen. But the Bible says here in verse 24, Put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying and speaking, they speak every man his neighbor, for we are members of one another. That is not what I wanted to read. Put off concerning former conversations of old man. Put off concerning former conversations of old man. You are duty bound by God to change your whole attitude, to change your whole outlook on life when you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Put away the former conversations. That means you should have a renewed mind. Amen. You, you, you should be transformed or transforming by the renewing of your mind every day. Put off the former conversations, the way that you used to think about things, the way that you used to perceive things before you were in Christ Jesus. That should be according to your attitude. And that's what people see. People see our attitudes. They see the way uh, we look at things. They see the way that we perceive things. As, as the, as the uh, definition said, they see they see the settled way that we think or feel about something or someone. They see these things in us and what separates us. Uh, the Christian from the non-Christian, what separates the believer from the non-believer is your attitude. That's why it's so important to manage your attitude, because as I said before, once you, you make the profession to the public that you are saved, you are a Christian, you are in Christ Jesus, they're looking to see how you are managing your attitude. They may not say it that way, but they are looking to see how you are managing your attitude. There's got to be a difference in the way we behave than the world behaves. There's got to be a separation in the way we behave and the world behave. The same thing can happen to me that can happen to someone in the world. I am not supposed to 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 lose my cool and flip out over things the way a non-believer would. Why? Because I know that all things work together for the good of us who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I know that things are going to work out. I'm supposed to be optimistic that things are going to turn around. I'm supposed to be optimistic and faithful that, that things are going to work my way because of the word of God. Remember last week, meditate on this word day and night. You know, by a show of hands, who's been meditating more on the word of God? Amen. Don't uh, please don't don't have me wasting my time trying to preach and teach to you if you're not going to conform to this word of God. How many people has been meditating more on the word of God? Whatever you put into your spirit is what's going to come out. 
Amen. If you're meditating on the word of God, when crisis come, when adversity comes, when obstacles rise in your life, if you if you're feeding your spirit, the word of God, the word of God is going to come out. The word of God is going to be manifest in your life. The word of God is going to make manifest in your situation. But if you're feeding yourself hate, you're feeding yourself uh, frustration and things of that nature, if you're pondering on, on worst case scenarios all of the time, if you're thinking about the worst that could happen all of the time, then then you are you are it's affecting your attitude, your inner critic can affect your attitude in a pot in a negative light your inner critic can affect your attitude in a negative light now i wanted to hang my thoughts actually on verses 26 and 27 that's where i want to be 26 and 27 because 26 says be angry sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath be angry and sin not like i said god gave us everything and being angry is 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 not a problem when you manage your anger correctly. I love I'm loving that word manage because that's that that makes that puts it up to you. You manage your anger. You manage your attitude. Your attitude can be positive towards things, your attitude can be negative towards things. You can be optimistic or you can be a pessimist. Amen. It's all up to you. It's what you make of the situation things are going to happen to all of us as Cusel always says life is going to happen it is going not if it's going to happen is when it happens life is going to happen and it's up to us to manage the the good and the bad it's up to us to manage the mountaintops and the valleys it's up to us to manage how we're going to act what happens to you is only 10 percent of the equation the other 90 percent is how you perceive and handle it what is your attitude towards it the second definition that i wanted to read concerning attitude is a truculent or incooperative behavior hostile and un in an hostile and unfriendly manner here is where uh, we tend to treat each other bad amen a, a, a uncooperative behavior in a hostile and unfriendly manner and that's where it ties in with verse number 26 be ye angry but sin not. Don't act out in a hostile manner. Don't don't act out. We, we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We have to get out of having attitudes towards one another. We have to get out of having attitudes towards one another. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Somebody may say something that hurts your feelings. Somebody may say something that just don't set right with you. Amen. But why don't you, you know, have a woosah moment? Why don't you relax? Take take time. I was watching a movie uh, with Selena the other day and uh, the young man, um, he was autistic. And when he would get frazzled or when he would get worked up, him and his mother would count slowly to six. And as they counted, he would he would calm down and everything would be peaceful. Some of us need to to take that lesson at heart. Because some of us are too quick to get angry. And when you, when you act out out of that anger, all of us get angry. Amen. Um, I, I've, I've heard people ask me, how do I stay so peaceful? And how do I smile all the time? And how am I always happy? And the truth of the matter is, I'm not always happy. Uh, I may have a smile on my face, but I'm not always happy. Because this scripture really uh, penetrates my spirit. And it's one of the ones that I lean on. When I get angry, I, I talk to myself all the time. People say people that talk to people say that that those of us that talk to ourselves are crazy. Uh, I disagree. I disagree with that. I have to tell myself that that's a part of meditating on this word day and night. I have to I have to repeat these scriptures to myself. If I have to say them out loud, I'll say them out loud. You think about me what you want to think. But I am managing my attitude the way I need to manage my attitude. I have to tell myself to calm down. I have to tell myself to relax. Uh, I have to tell myself you're angry, but don't sin. How do you be angry and not sin? You don't react to anything and you don't respond to anything while you're in that state. Take a moment to calm down. Tell them, let me let me get back with you. You don't even have to tell them why. Just say, let me get back with you. Amen. Something upsets you. 
uh, you know, immediately because, you know, the enemy comes in quick. The enemy is swift. Amen. The enemy is swift and he'll come in fast. But it's up to you to manage the information, to manage the situation that's going on. That's why you can be angry and sin not. Once you're angry and once you feel like, feel like you're getting heated, just don't respond. Don't react. Get yourself together. Invite the Holy Spirit to intervene. Invite the Holy Spirit to, to, to come in and take control before you open your mouth and say anything. Because after you open your mouth and say it, it's out there and you can't get it back. Amen. Jesus said it's not what goes into the man that defiles him, but it what comes out that defiles the man. So you need to understand that, you know, you, you can absorb it. I want, I want you to believe that with me. I, I can absorb some things. I can handle some things. I can take some things. I can go through some things. Amen. For the, for the sake of peace. Amen. You, you, you go through more things because you're able to handle them. The more you the more you go through, the more you can handle. Like we said the other day of uh, the church saying God won't put more on you than you can bear. And that that includes, uh, you know, what you can take as far as your attitude. We're all going to be tested by it. We all need to do what the Bible says. Be ye angry and sin not. You don't have to give anybody a piece of your mind. You don't you don't have to retaliate. You don't have to respond to everything. If you want to confuse the devil just keep silent. If you want to confuse the devil, smile in the face of adversity. If you want to confuse the devil, don't let the obstacles turn you around and turn you back. Amen. It would be great if everybody loved everybody, but it's just not that way. And that's why it's important for the church, the body of Christ, to hold together and love each other. Amen. And then uh, finally, and I'm going to conclude here as we're talking about the, the tips that Paul has given the church at Ephesus to uh, strengthen the believers and explain the nature and the purpose of the church, the body of Christ. This is what this whole lesson is about, strengthening the body of Christ. If the body of Christ doesn't love each other, then who do we who else do we expect to love us? We have to love each other. We have to treat each other right. We have to treat each other with respect. Be ye angry and sin not conclusively. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Whatever it is you're going through, take it to God. Don't wake up the next morning with the burden of yesterday's problems, yesterday's issues. They're going to compound. They're going to build up. They're going to start affecting you mentally. They're going to start affecting you physically. They're going to start affecting your relationships. And this is another important reason why Paul is telling uh, the church, the Ephesians, this at this point, because, you know, you can come to church in a bad mood because of something that happened yesterday, something somebody said yesterday and take it out on innocent people. You can go to work in a bad mood, husbands and wives fussing at night, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, fussing at night and then going to church. I mean, going to work the next day or whatever you do the next day, mistreating innocent people, snapping off at people in your family that just called to see how you were doing because you had a bad day yesterday. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Seek peace for that day. You know, God is going to give you new mercy for the next day. This is uh, something that Selena and I have lived off of and something that I tell each and every um couple when they come in for pre, uh, premarital counseling and that is don't go to sleep angry with each other don't go to sleep mad at each other because the next day is going to post his own problems the next day is going to have his own issues and you don't need to bring yesterday's issues to compound on today's issues or you're going to find yourself in a in a world of trouble don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. do everything that you can do to gain peace in your situation, I'm, I'm going to say before you go to sleep, do everything that you can do to, to, to have a calm and a peace in your spirit before you get up the next morning. And that's what the Bible says. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. And then it says here um, in 27, neither give place to the devil. And that's a good place to start. 
when you are angry and when you have a poor attitude and when your attitude is, is, is incooperative with others and you dealing in an unfriendly manner, the enemy will get in your head. That's why it's, it's so important to be angry and sin not. I'm talking about in the church and in your personal life. This is why it's important to be angry and sin not because when the devil see that you're angry and he see that you're not doing nothing about it and he can see your temperature boiling. This is why prayer is so important. Somebody, somebody watching this need to pray for peace right now. Go ahead and push pause. I'm almost done. You can turn it off if you want to, but you need to pray for peace right now. Peace in your mind, peace in your spirit, peace in your body, peace in your soul. Pray for peace right now because the enemy is waiting to launch an attack on you mentally during this stage of anger, during this stage of anger. And the Bible is telling us that, like I said, as far as church and as far as your personal life, the Bible is telling us when you're angry, don't act out. Don't sin during your anger. When you sin during your anger, you are allowing the devil to have victory over the situation. Rebuke him out of your mind. Rebuke him out of your spirit. Don't be afraid to rebuke the devil out of your situation. Be angry. You're going to be angry. Sin not. Don't give room to the devil. Don't give him an inch. Don't give him any space. You know, we've, we, we, we've always heard the old adage, you give, up, you give somebody an inch and they'll take a yard. That's the enemy. Get, you give him an inch, he's going to take a yard. When you, when you, when you close the door on, on, on Satan and his tactics, you better lock it, double lock it, deadbolt it, and everything else. Don't leave a crack in the door for him to get his foot in. Don't give him a foothold on your situation. Don't sin while you're angry. Don't act out while you're angry. Manage your attitude. Like I said about the baby in the beginning. Now that you're in Christ and you've put away the former conversations. And you're, you're renewed spiritually. Your mind has been renewed. There should be a different way that you handle things. A different way that you act on things a different way that 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 you receive uh, the things that happen in your life. And like I said, with the little baby, you know, don't 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 have that baby like attitude here as a grown adult. It's time to stop acting out, kicking, screaming, crying, causing chaos, causing chaos. It's time. To, it's time to stop all of that. I want you to repeat this with me. I will better manage my attitude. And that's going to make everything around you better. I will better manage my attitude. Just like everything else, it's a journey and not a destination. Work on it every single day. And trust me, you will have opportunities every day <laughs> to work on your attitude. I'm going to leave you now. We'll see you uh, virtually on Sunday. We're going to go through the month of February virtually. And then in March, the plan is as of now, as COVID is supposed to peak in February, plan is as of now to start March on first and third Sundays. And we'll do that for a few months and see how things are going. Instead of jumping all in, uh, we're going to see how things are going. And uh, virtual church will be on second and fourth Sunday. Please watch the videos. Please encourage your family to watch the videos. If you like it, share it on your social media outlets. Uh, you have permission and I'll be happy for you to share it on your social media outlets. Um, share it with friends and family. Let's work together. Let's grow this church. Assembly Chapel is a great place to be. It's not the only place God is blessing, but I can guarantee you it is one of them. God bless.